הקדוש בוקר אור, מסכת בבא קמא, דף קב עמוד א', that's 201a. We're talking about right now a... We're talking about the majority of the wood that if it's going to be made for hasaka, which means that since it was going to be made for the firewood and it's not going to be a tzeshemen, which is going to be a light in itself, so therefore licha techila, it does not have kidushat shavit, And it's not going to be chal, even if you did come and you picked them up for a different purpose. Okay? Fine. I'm Rav Kahana. Rav Kahana now comes and he says, Etzim la'asaka is a tanahi. Really, Be'emet, etzim, right? Wood for firewood is actually going to be a machlok et tanahim. Titania, as we learned in a braita, en moslim perot shviit. You're not allowed to give fruits of shviit. So, for example, wine or anything like that. לא למשרה, not for, for necessities of the soaking of the flax, ולא לכבוסה, and not for the necessity of the clothing, this is the washing of the clothing. ורבי יוסה אומר, רבי יוסה says, נותנים פירות שביעית לתוך המשרה ולתוך הכבוסה. Right, you can give the פירות שביעית, whether it's going to be inside of the משרה or inside of the כבוסה, whether it's going to be for the flax or for the washings. מהי תעמד רבנן? What's the reasoning of רבנן? Right? One more time. You had a machloket, you had the Tanakama, which is basically going to be the Chachamim, and you have Rabbi Yose. So it says, Amar Kra, the Pasuk says, Ve'ayta Shabbat da'aretz lachem le'ochla. Le'ochla is mashma that the perot shavi'it were dafka given for achila, ve'lo le'mishra. Le'ochla ve'lo le'chvusa. Which means that it comes out here that the Tanakama holds that you're not allowed to come and to use. Whether we're talking about the wine of Shavit for the soaking of the flax or for kibbutz begadim, because obviously you're not allowed to do that. So when it says leochla, it's leochla velo lemishra, leochla velo lechusa. Rabbi Yose Omer, Rabbi Yose comes and he says, Amar Ka, the pasuk says, Fayta Shabbat Aretz Lachem, Lachem lechol tzorochechem. So it's much more we hear that Gidule Shavit were given for all of your necessities. So even if it's going to be for Mishra, for Chusa, for anything, it's also going to be, it's also going to be good. Okay? So he comes and he says like this. He comes and he says like this. Rabbanan Nami. Right? Rabbanan. Right? They come and they say, okay? Haketiv, it's written, Lachem. Now, according to the rabbis, if it says Lachem, Lachem means for everything. Okay? So if it means for everything, okay? So therefore, it's not just one little thing. It's not for just achila. It's for all tzorchechem. So says the Gemara, no. Lachem dumya de leochla. When it says, according to Shittat Chachamim, the word lachem, it means that the same shimush, the same usage has to be like eating. What does that mean? Bemisha na to biuro shavim. It has to be the dahana'a. the benefiting of it. When it's coming at the time when the pre is going to be destroyed from the world, for example, Akhila, is at the same time. When you eat something, when you're enjoying yourself, which is basically when you're putting it inside of your mouth, at that same moment when you're enjoying, that's when it just, it's removed from this world. So the Hana'a and Biuro are Shavim. Yatsa, this comes to exclude. Mishra Uchusa, this comes to exclude whether we're talking about other Hana'ot, Shanatan achar biuran. The dahana'a of the, misra, the mishra or the kvusa is coming only after the biur. Okay, because that's what we're talking about over here. Okay, so now says the Gemara, right, that obviously when you're talking about the mishra kvusa, the dahana'a is only afterwards. It's not at the exact same moment. Because when you're putting it inside of this, uh, how do you call this? You know, in the, in the flax or the kibus, Right, it's mitkalkel miyad, right, and the toelet is only after it's already been soaked there or after it's been there for a few days. It's like basically once you put the wine there, or once you put thing, kadish, another one talking about. But the benefit, the reaping of the benefit, is only after a few days that the flax has been there or that it's washed. So therefore, it's not going to be shave. It's not going to be equal, just like eating. Eating the benefiting and the and the destroying is at the exact same moment. Obviously, this comes to exclude this, which is not going to be at the exact same moment. So says the Gemara, 
remember one more time. This is the machloke between Rabbi Yose and Rabbanan, the Tanakama. Rabbi Yose comes and he says, You're allowed to come and put, right? Whether we're talking about Pirot Shvi'it inside of Mishra or Kfusa. There's no problem. So what is, but according to Rabbi Yose, it's written Leochla. What does he do with the word Leochla? He took the word Lachem, Lechol Chechem. But what does he do with the word Leochla? So Aman Lecha is going to answer you. How He needs it for that which it is written in a Braita. The Tanya, but we learned in a Braita, Leochla, the Lolem Lugma. By Perot Shvi'it, you're only allowed to eat it. Remember, Perot Shvi'it, you're allowed to do business with Shemitah produce, but you're allowed to eat it, right? But it's not only eating. He comes and he says, says Rabbi Yose, Leochla, the Lomelugma. What does it mean now? The Lomelugma, you're not allowed to make a Tachboshet, uh, for example, right? Out of it. So says the Gemara, Ata Omer Leochla, the Lomelugma, O Ena Ela Leochla, the Lolechvusa. One second. When you come and you say, that the word leochla, remember, that you're allowed to take the fruits and you're allowed to eat it, okay? Meaning, Shabbat Aretz, right, is that you're not allowed to work the lamb, but you're allowed to eat it. Now, we went and we said, and Rabbi Yosef said, for all your necessities. Now, the Gemara is saying, one second, how do you know that leochla means velo legumluma, right? Maybe it's leochla velo lechvusa. Meaning, if you're already coming, if you have a general rule, leochla sof pasuk, it has to be dumya dachila. So then everything else makes sense, right? Why? Because it's not going to be lechvusa, it's not going to be melugma, it's not going to be all the rest. Okay, makes sense. But if you're already going to say leochla velo melugma, maybe it's if you're already excluding something, so maybe the meant it's going to come to exclude this. So says the Gemara, no. This is why. When the Pasuk says, when it already says, remember, according to Rabbi Yosef, all your necessities, anything that you need to do with it. So it's already written there that you're allowed to use it for washing, right? Hamani mekayim. So what do I need leochla? Leochla v'lo nilugma. Yeah, it has to be that it's not for medicinal purposes and not for that. So says the Gemara. But why? Umara iti lerabot lekvusa ulotzit emunah. One second, one second. Refuah is not a necessity. Why do you tell me that according to Shittat Rabbi Yose, yeah, the leochla is leochla v'lo nilugma? And lachem is lechol tzorchechem. Refuah is not a tzorch. Why do you pick and choose? Why do you say, no, 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 no. It says leochla velo melugma. Maybe it's leochla velo lechvusa. Lechvusa is kvisa, yeah? We're not to washing of the clothing. So says the Gemara, no. Marbe ani et hakvusa sheshave bechol adam. Motsi ani melugma sheno shave bechol adam. He gives you a very simple answer. Something actually very logical. And he says like this. He says, Everybody needs to wash clothing. It's Shabel lechol adam. And therefore, when the Torah says, Vaita Shabbat, it's lachem leochla, lachem equals lechol tzorchechem, all your necessities, which means according to Rabbi Yosef, fruits of Shavit, fruits of Shemitah, you could use it for whatever you like. But when it says leochla, it comes to exclude something. What does it come to exclude? Right, because that was what the rabbi said. The rabbi said, Leochla velo lefusa. Leochla velo lemishra. So therefore, what is it coming to exclude? It says the Biyoseh, coming to exclude melugma, refua. Right, melugma means here refua. So the Gemara asks, why are you coming to exclude refua? Yeah, maybe Bemet is coming to exclude something else. Right, maybe Bemet is coming to exclude fusa. So he says, no, but it says lechem. She says, yeah, but lechem, maybe it's lechem also for your refua as well. He says, no, no. He says, when you say lachem, it's for your necessities. But the necessities has to be shaveh b'chol nefesh. It has to be for everybody. Who's for everybody? So we know that, for example, everybody has to do laundry, right? But not everybody needs refuah. 
So therefore, when I have a choice to add in, I already say lachem means lechol tzorochechem, all your necessities. But the word lechla for sure comes to exclude something. For eating, comes to exclude something. So he comes and he says, it comes to exclude melugma. Why? It's not shabbat lechol nefesh. Okay? Fine. So says the Gemara, one second. Now there's another Braita. The Braita says, Keman Azla Hadatanya. Who does it go like this Braita? Where when it's talking about Vaita Shabbat Tzachem Leochla, it says Leochla Velo Melugma, Leochla Velo Leziluf, Leochla Velo La Asomimenu Apikdivizim. So Keman, who is this like? One more time. The Pasuk says Vaita Shabbat Haaretz Lachem Leochla. This Shemitah is going to be for you. You cannot work the field, but you're allowed to eat from the field. Le'ochla. Now, since it says le'ochla, the rabbis come and say le'ochla velo l'nishra velo l'chvusa, which means that you could only use it for eating, but you can't use it as soap, and you can't use it like for washing, you know, clothing, and then you can't use it for the flax, right? And the Rabbi Yosef comes and he says, no, 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 lachem, v'ayta shabbat aretz lachem, lachem lechol tzorchechem, for anything that you need. Ah, what does it say le'ochla? So says the Gimara, but one second, the Brayta says So that could be like a Biyose, obviously. But it says Now all of a sudden we don't know who this is going like. And when it says So says the Gimara, who does that go like? It has to be like a Biyose. It says, why? Because if it's going to be according to the Rabbis, the Rabbis already told you that Lachem, is not only just not Melugma and Ziluf and Apikiduzin. The rabbi has already told you also Lo Lemishav Lo Likusa. So the fact that the Gemara only told you that it's going to be, right, there's a Braita. The Braita says Leochla Velo Le Ziluf, Leochla Velo Le Melugma, Leochla Velo Le Apikiduzin, which, right, which is basically a, it's, it's a type of medicine that they used to use that used to cause vomiting, which means that they used to come and they would, uh, it would make them vomit. Okay? So therefore, in such a scenario, right? it, uh... since it cannot be the Rabbanan, because obviously according to the Rabbanan, you would have to add in other things. But according to the Biyose, when it says Lochla, Melugma was not Shavet for everyone. You remember? Because we said the Melugma was basically for Rufua. The same thing Ziluf. Ziluf was always done to give good smell for the house, but it wasn't done by everybody. It was certain people that used to come and they used to throw it Remember that they used to have dirt floors. Dirt floors, the dust comes up. So in order that the dust doesn't come up, you throw wine on the floor and then it does two things. Whenever you put water or dust on, on, or water or wine on the floor, so the dust does not rise, it settles. But not only that, it's also going to give a good smell. It's like a perfume. Uh, yeah. So just the concept of the... No, no, no. Water also does it. In construction, no. The smell, yes. The smell is wine. Right? But the, 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 the dust settles and doesn't rise. That's also water. They do that even today in construction. Right, that after construction they'll come and they'll throw water on the floor. Right, that's why you always have the they have a hose and all those things because that way it, the dust settles and it's not going to go up into the air. But here, obviously, these are things in the Pikuzin also the same thing. It's not going to be shavelech nefesh, and therefore this is obviously going going to Rabbi Yose and not according to Rabbanan. Two dots, okay? The Yuda men, the Yuda comes and he says, "Ima sheva." We're talking about now. Shevach. So if you remember Rabbi Meir Rabbi Yudah, they had a machloket in the Mishnah when a tzaba, right? He accepted semet, right? In order to come and in order to paint something, okay? And then they they change the color to another color. So according to Rabbi Meir, the balat semet he has to give him the metzimro, okay? That means basically the tzaba stays with the semet, right? But he just has to give him the price of the semet that he gave him. But according to Rabbi Yudah, since the tzaba changed midat balabait. Yadola Tachtona, and therefore the Barat Semer takes the Semer, and he only has to pay him the Hutzaot, right? Which is basically the lowest amount, whether it's going to be, which we're going to explain right now. Okay? So fine. So Yativ Rav Yosef Achorei the Rabbi Abba, right? So was sitting Rav Yosef behind Rabbi Abba when they were learning, Kamed Rav Huna in front of Rav Huna. Yativ Rav Huna Vekamar, so Rav Huna was coming and he was saying, Halacha Zayek Rav Yosho Mekurcha. Okay? Valacha Kreb Yudah. So he said that the halacha is like Rabbi Yosho ben Kurcha, and the halacha is like Rabbi Yudah, not like Rabbi Meir in our Mishnah. Adre Rav Yosef lape. So Rav Yosef, he turned around. Right? He got upset. Right? So he turned around. Amar, and he says, Bishlema Rabbi Yosho ben Kurcha, Itzrich. 
I understand, right, Rabbi Yoshua ben Kurcha, right? He says, why do I understand it's going to be the lacha like Rabbi Yoshua ben Kurcha? Salkadait Amina was, I would have thought to say, Yachri Rabbim lacha Rabbim, right? Because there it was Rabbi Yoshua ben Kurcha, Keneged Rabbim. So therefore, Kamash Malana lacha Kiachid, meaning there I must tell you that the lacha is like Rabbi Yoshua ben Kurcha, but it's a chidush. Because usually, Yachir Rabbi Melecha, Rabbi, Rabbi Yoshua, yes, Rabbi Yoshua Ben Korcha was a Yachid. He was arguing on a Rabbi, but we still pass him like the Yachid. So there's a Chidush that Avuna has to tell you the Lacha is like Rabbi Yoshua Ben Korcha. Okay, fine. But what is Rabbi Yoshua Ben Korcha? Then we're going to go to the other one, which is Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Miram. Rabbi Yoshua Ben Korcha, Mahi. What was the case of Yoshua Ben Korcha exactly? Titania was learned in a bright time of Yoshua Ben Korcha Omen. Minve bishtar en nifraim mehen. Okay, which means like this. When you come and you have a minve bishtar on the goy. Right? So you lent money to a goy and it's a minve bishtar. It's a document. So you have a document. It wasn't al peh. It wasn't an oral loan. It was a loan which is recorded. Okay, so therefore. En nifraim mehen. You cannot come and get, right, the payment because it's a simcha that he got out of the debt, okay? And therefore, he's going to come and say to his uh, Abu Dazara, thank you very, very much. Yeah, I actually had one of the people which were in charge of the Beta Knesset in Venezuela, right? It was incredible. He always told me that his workers never understood. Every single time it was payday, he used to come and he used to have a big smile and he used to give them their checks. So somebody once, one of the Goyim, they once went to him, they told him, what did you say? You know, the majority of people, you know, when they're paying, right, they're sad. You're coming and you're all jolly. Like, what's going on over here? You know, it's a smile from ear to ear. What's going on? So he actually went and he told them this, right? He went and he told them, now that I pay you, I don't owe you anything anymore. So I'm the happiest person in life, right? That's it. Here, the exact same thing. When the goy comes, and it's love goy, it's anybody. When you come and you pay off your debt, you're happy. You feel relieved. Beforehand, you owe money. Right? You're dead. You're indebted. Now, Baruch Hashem, I paid off. So what happened? If the Goy is going to come and pay you back on a milve bishtar, right? Obviously, we're going to see the difference between why it has to, there's a difference between a document and without a document, obviously. Because if there's no document, maybe he'll never pay you back at all. Then you, you might as well take as much as you can, obviously. Right? But if there's a document, which means that you'll always be able to collect, don't collect it right before the Chag. Don't, if you're, don't collect the debt right before the Chag. Because if you're going to collect it right before the Chag, He's going to come on his hug and he's going to say, thank you so much to his God, right? And we don't want that you're the cause that he's thanking his God. You are allowed to collect, but it's a mil valpe, an oral debt. He says, why? Because you're saving the money from his hands. Because if not, whoever said he's going to pay you, you're going to come next time. You're going to say, ah, give me the, say, what are you talking about? La Adam. You know what La Adam is? Lo ayu devarim me'olam. Never existed. What are you talking about? And now what? Jump up and down. You're never going to get your money back. So you're matzim yadu. You're saving the money from it. So if it's going to be an oral debt, take whatever you can, whenever you can. But if it's a debt that anyway you cannot come against, it's a written document. So therefore, what are you coming collecting now? Wait a few days. Don't don't look for the debt now. Don't come. Wait until after his chag. And then you come and you collect the, you know, the money. Okay? So this is where we said that the halacha was like, Rabbi Yoshua ben Kurcha. Okay? Ella, but rather... Right? Now, what was the Chachamim there saying, obviously? Let's see. Um, Chachamim argue, and they say that you're not allowed to collect any Chov from the Goim before their Chag. That means according to Chachamim, there's no difference between Mil Ve'al Peh, Mil Ve'ashtar. According to Rabbi Yoshua ben Kurcha, there was a difference in Mil Ve'al Peh, Mil Ve'ashtar. We pass like Rabbi Yoshua ben Kurcha, Kenegad the Chachamim, and therefore, you're allowed to come and you're allowed to collect it. So says the Gemara, but Alachazak of Yehuda, Lamali. Why do you have to say now that Alachazak of Yehuda? Why? Machloket ve'acharkach stamhi. In our Mishnah, it's a machloket. Machloket between who and who? In our Mishnah, it's a machloket between who and who? <laughs> Who? No. Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda. So you have a machloket, and then you have 
astam, meaning when you have a machloke between Rabbi Yuda and Rabbi Mir, and then afterwards you have another Mishnah, that the Mishnah is a stam, right? We have a general rule. Machloket v'achar kach stam, halacha kistam. Meaning like this, if I come and I tell you, listen, there's two opinions. You ask me a question, I tell you there's two opinions. And then 20 minutes later, right? It doesn't matter how much afterwards, but afterwards you come and you say, okay, what's halacha? And I tell you only one opinion. So before it was a machloket, and now I'm telling you one opinion. So what's halacha? Like the one opinion. So same thing. If you have a Mishnah and it's a machlok between Rabbi Mir and Rabbi Yudah, and then you have a Stam Mishnah later on, and the Stam Mishnah is like Rabbi Yudah, obviously the Zalachah is like Rabbi Yudah. So why does Rav Huna have to come and give you a Chidush? By the way, Halachah like Rabbi Yudah. Zaku Baruch. Why do you need it? Yeah? Machloket, right? So to hear, Machloket the Babakama. The Machloket is in Babakama, in our Mishnah. To do with litzvah lo adom utzvah shachor shachor zvah. You give it to him to color it to red. He did a black, black, red. Rabbi Meir comes and he says, "You just give him the money of the tzemer, and but the the craftsman keeps the wool." Rabbi Yuda comes and he says, "No. If the shevach is more than the the expenses, if the appreciation and the value is going to be more than the expenses, you have to give him the the expenses. If the expenses is going to be more than the appreciation." You give an appreciation, meaning that the guy is always the one, the craftsman that changed. He's always Yadola Tachtuna. He's always the losing party. But then you have a stam in Babu Metzia. Why do you have a stam in Babu Metzia? Titnam, as we learned in the Mishnah, Kola Meshane, Yadola Tachtuna. Vechola Chozerbo, Yadola Tachtuna. Which means like this whenever you come and you deviate, right, you change from something which was already done, so that your hand is on the, on the bottom. You are the one which is a losing hand because you changed. If you always do the norm, right, and you don't change anything, so you're not gonna, you're not gonna, your hand is not on the bottom. Here, your hand is on the bottom. You're on the losing end of the stick because you changed. The guy came and he told you something. You came and you changed it, so it's your fault. So for obviously you're the So it's a stam mishna in Babu Metzia. So answers the gemana that Ravuna and according to Ravuna, it's you still needed it. Why do you need this chidusha the lachazak and Yehuda? Salka daita chamina, I would have thought to say, and seder la mishnah. Right? What does that mean? There's no seder in the mishnah, and therefore since there's no seder in the mishnayot, right, this is based upon Rashi and other places as well, which means that after Rebbe taught the mishnayot before the chachamim, they went, right, and they put it according to an order. Okay, and that's what we have. But it comes out that even though by us, one mishnah is before, but really, when they learned it, it wasn't in a certain order. It could be that they learned this Mishnah. So then it comes out that if you're going to say instead of the Mishnah, maybe it was the exact opposite. Maybe you had a Stam, and then you had the Machloket. The Machloket was after the Stam. Not that the Stam was, was after the Machloket. So if you have it like that, so we don't pass it like the Stam. Because if I tell you a, a general statement, and then afterwards I come and I tell you, by the way, it's a Machloket between this and this. Sorry. We don't have any more that uh, this is how we pass it. The Mahloket so, is in the Gemara, it's not in the Mishnah. No, these are all the Mishnayons. This is all Mishnah. The Everything's in Mishnah. Our Mishnah was the Mahloket between Rabbi Mir and Rabbi Yudah. The Mishnah later on was a Stam Mishnah as well. <laughs> Everything's in Mishnah. We're not talking about Gemara. Okay? Because you can't have a Gemara to enter unless the Gemara is answering a Mishnah. But if you have a Stam Mishnah, usually the Lacha is like a Stam Mishnah. Okay? So that was the Shita of Ravuna. So that, why was Rabbi Yosef that upset? Rav Yosef got upset. Rav Yosef got upset. Rav Yosef comes and he says, I understand why he said that Lachaz like in Yoshua Ben Korcha because it's teaching you a chidush. Even though Yachim Rabin Lachak Rabin, this is an exception to the rule. But if you're going to tell me now that the Lachaz like Rabbi Yudah, obviously the Lachaz like Yudah, it's a stam, it's a machlok, it's a machlok, it's a stam. So Rav Huna said, no. Rav Huna was telling you a chidush. Don't think that there's end said then. La Mishnah. So what about Shittat of Yosef then? So he says of Yosef, Yach Yisro, you could always say that then. So, so then just destroy the rule. Why don't we actually just say that? There's no seder in the Mishnah, right? And that's it. And therefore, you thought that it's a stam and and machloket. Uh, After it's a stam, maybe it's a stam and machloket. If you're going to come and use that logic, so you could always use that logic. So Ravuna is going to answer you, no. Ki lo amlina an seder le Mishnah bechad ha-masechta. Aval betrei masechta, masechtot, Amnina, he says, when do we say and said the Mishnah? 
we only say in Seder La Mishnah only in one Masechet. Meaning when you have two Mishnayot, right, it's a Machloket in Astam, in the same Masechet, right, for example, both of them are in Baba Tama, then you're right. But if it's going to be in two Masechetot, right, we do say in Seder La Mishnah. Okay, because it's two different Masechetot. Okay, so therefore here it's one is in Baba Kama and one is in Baba Metziah. Says yeah. the Gemara, but Rav Yosef comes and he says no. Rav Yosef says, Kulu Nezikin Chavzeh, Baba Baba Kama, Baba Metziah, Baba Batra is all Baba. Right? It's all the one, it's all the same name. It's all one Baba. So if it's all one Masechet. So according to that, that's why according to him, he, there was nothing what to talk about. Because basically we're not going to say, say right, and there's such a concept. Okay? Rav Yosef, whom we tell is Rav Yosef is coming and saying that really, be this is one mesech. No, rak b'shtem mesechtot or b'mesech lechad ken anachlo means right, and that's what he's saying. So that's a machloket. According to Rav Huna, he wants to say that Baba Kama and Metziah are considered two different mesechtot. So therefore, since it's considered two different mesechtot, I could come and I could say right that really be That's what the chidush is. Is that what that we're saying that really be It's going to be us a machloket, and then afterwards a stam. But Rav Yosef is coming and saying, no, it's all the same Masechet. So if it's all the same Masechet, what are you talking about then? Right? <laughs> if you're going to tell me that, right? So when are we going to say, En Sede La Mishnah, in one Masechet, right? But if it's two Masechet, so according to that, if you're going to tell me now that all Nezikim is one Masechet, so for even on a Machloket and then afterwards a Stam, right? You're going to, which are going to be in two different Babot, it's still considered a Machloket and afterwards a Stam. But according to Rav Huna, he says, no, right? One Baba is a different, therefore we don't, we could actually say and said the Mishnah. That's why you needed the Chidush. No, no, no. We still pass in like Yehuda. Okay, that's the first answer. Another answer in Rav Yosef. The Baitema, if you want, you can answer another answer. It was because we had it from Halachot Psukot, and there by the Halachot Psukot it says Kol Hameshane Yedol Tachtona VeChol Achozer Bo Yedol Tachtona. Right, which means right. The first thing of Kol Hameshane, right, Kol Hameshane. It has nothing to do with the Mishnah over there. It was only to teach it together with the second one of Kula Chozerbo. So it comes to teach you that just like the Orah Shniya, that there's nobody arguing, so too Yeshliv Sok also to do with the Orah Rishona, that nobody's arguing. Which means, Kula Chozerbo means if you retract, you have the lower hand. So the same thing, if you're going to change anything, you're going to deviate, you have the lower hand, and therefore that's why you need it to actually come and to actually mention it. Okay? Fine. Two dots. Tanu Rabbanam, we learned to the Braita. If you give money to your shaliyah, Yaakov bet amu bet, one or two be, likach lo chitim, to purchase chitim, velakach mehen seorim, and he purchased barley instead of chitim. You gave him to purchase wheat, he purchased barley. B- barley, you told him purchase barley, velakach mehen chitim, and he got wheat. Tanya Chada, one of them actually taught, yeah, im pachatu, pachatu lo, timotiru, timotiru lo, so one Tana actually brought in the Braita that you know what? Everything depends. If it goes up in price or down in price, everything goes to the Shaliach. Right? Why? Because he changed. Right? The, 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 the person told him, right, Secret buy thing. this thing. So now whatever you bought, listen, it's at your own risk. Uh, you're right. If it goes up in value, it went up in value for you. If it goes down, it goes down in value for you. The Tanichada, in Pachatu, Pachatu, Lo, in Otiru, Otiru, Neemza. The other Tana comes and he says, no. He comes and he says, in Be'emet, it goes down in value. It goes down in value for the Shaliyah. But if it goes up in value, it's divided between both of them. Shaliyah and then Shaliyah. So now how do we answer this then? What's the shot? Why is it that one person is telling you that everything is the Shaliyah? And the other one is saying, no, 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 the Shaliyah loses. But if he gains, it's half-half. Right? If he gains, it's going to be half-half. So what is exactly right, the halakha? Okay, so I'm Rabbi Yochanan, right? Rabbi Yochanan comes and he says, right, as follows. Yeah. So I'm Rabbi Yochanan, says Rabbi Yochanan, Lakashia. It's not a question. Harbimir, Harbiuda. These two different Tanaim are two different people. One of them is Abimi, right? One of them is Rabbi Yuda. And therefore, let's let's continue. 
right? The first brighter that says that everything belongs to the Shaliyah is according to Shittat Rabinim. That once he was Mishane, he's Konet Zelegamre. And therefore, whether the good or for the bad, whether it goes up in value or down in value, it's 100% the Shaliyah. Why? Because he was Koneh. The second he changed, he's Koneh. The second Braita, Shittat Abiyuda. Abiyuda comes and he says, Shinui Eno Koneh. Meaning the fact that you came and you changed from the Balabait, you do not Koneh. And therefore, <laughs> okay, you were Mishane, but at the end of the day, you're not Koneh the Chafetz, right? So therefore, right, it comes out according to that, the same thing. Meaning, it, even though the Shliach did not use the money according to what he was supposed to, at the end of the day, right, it's, he bought it for both of them. And therefore, if it goes up in value, right, they both, uh, they both benefit, they both reap the benefits of it. So, how do you know that this is a machlok between Rabbi and Rabbi Yudah? Dilma, maybe I can look at Rabbi Yudah. Maybe the Rabbi Yudah didn't talk about this. Ela bemide de chazile le gufe. In a chefetz, which is going to be, right, in the, for the balabite himself. For example, tzemer, it was supposed to be for clothing, right? Or a safsal, right? A bench, he's going to sit down. But in such, there for sure the balabite is going to be makpid on a shinui. But if it's going to be for now, for example, buying for merchandise, you know, that you want to come and you want to, as a commodity, to buy and sell, Luomar, maybe Rabbi Mir did not say, right? Maybe he doesn't hold, right, the Shinui Kone, because the entire purpose was Kinya in order to be a Chesed. So therefore, as long as it's going to, so anything that he buys is, as long as it's going to be Rabbi Yach, what does he care now? Meaning, maybe Rabbi Mir admits that in such a case, right, really it should also go to the to them shaleach as well. Because he also is happy that he's going to... I'm going to come and I'm going to tell you, listen, I'm giving you money. I tell you, right, go make the investment for me. Buy me, you know, uh, salt. Now you found out that the uh, Yama Melap is full of salt. So you're going to make nothing. So what happens? You come and you buy me sugar, right? And then you come and you use it a kolmari. You make money. If it was going to be the, the, the clothing that I needed personally, so I asked you to buy me a tzitzit and you come and you buy me a, a sweater... I'm going to tell you, we live in Miami. What are you using a sweater for? And I said, yeah, crazy. In the shul. Yeah. In the shul, in a sweater. No, yeah. In the shul, yeah. In the shul yeah. So what's going on? <laughs> you understand? What, what, do, what do you... Yeah, you understand? That's a big sense. Yeah, you're, you're in Miami. Miami, you need AC all day. What are you talking about? The you understand? Yeah. 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 So it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But he comes and he says... But if right now it's going to be as a buying and selling, what do I care what you bought? It's true. I give you a marema call. I told you buy me this because that's what I think that you're going to make money. But if you come and you bought instead of the salt, you bought the sugar and then after you made the money, you think I'm not going to be happy? For sure. It wasn't something personal that I needed. So maybe even according to Rabbi Mir, it's going to be the same alakha. So says the Gemara, Elamir Rabbi Lazar, but rather Rabbi Lazar says, you're right. Both of them are Rabbi Mir. Ha ve'ha Rabbi Mir. It's not a question. One of them is talking about achila. Meaning if I come and I sent you to buy me wheat and you bought me barley, I'm going to tell you, how am I going to make a, a chameen, right, a dafina with a, with a barley? It's going to become a troll. It's not going to become a dafina. Uh, uh, yeah? It's a, not a good sale. Not a valid sale. Get rid of it. Yeah? So what happens? So therefore, you're right. Everything goes to the shaliach. The shaliach loses. It says, it why? Because I'm not happy with it. Because it was done for Achila. But if it's going to be for Sikhura, maybe be met, like, just like what you said. So what happened was is, They laughed at him. And then it's Israel On this explanation of Rav Yochanan. Right? Why? Because according to Rav Yochanan, according to Rav Yehuda, he says, how is it that the Mishaleach is ever going to acquire, right, if in a case where he was Mishaleach? He says, who's the one that told the mocher that the shaliach is going to kone for someone that's going to be matne chitin lebalamaot? Who's going to do that then? Okay. So according to the the Rabbi Lazar, there's no there's no question because we're talking about that the shaliach is not makpid. Okay. So it comes out that the shaliach was doing it. Right, and therefore, even though he didn't know what who, he's buying it for somebody else and everything, doesn't matter, it still helps, right? But according to the Shitab Rabbi Yochanan, 
that Behemet is, is considered Mishane, but it's not considered a Ganav that it's considered his own. So therefore, how does he, how do we know who's he buying it for? Meaning when you come to the guy to buy something, he knows that you're buying it for A, for B, what he told you, what he... You come, you buy, here it is, the merchandise, the command. He doesn't know anything else. So Matki Flav of Shmuel, right, Bar Sasrate, asks of Shmuel Bar Sasrate, Irachi, if you're going to tell me now that the Balamaut cannot buy anything, right, if the Mokher does not know who he's buying it for, Safilu Chitin Vechitin Namilo. Imagine you come to the guy sure, no. and you want to buy Chitin. Don't let him buy Chitin. Because I have to find out that you the, the guy really told you about Chitin. So Amar Biyavu says Biyavu, no. Shane Chitin de Chitin de Shlichute Ka'ab. When he's doing Chitin for Chitin, he's doing his Shlichut. And therefore there's no problem. And therefore he is the Balabai. Meaning the, he is the Mshaleach. Meaning like this. When I come and I tell yeah, my good friend, Huatu, yeah, to come and to do something for me. And he follows my instructions, yeah? Besides the Shekhi, I know that's that was, right? But he actually, he follows my instructions. He's instead of me. He's in my place. He is the Mshalach. Because I gave him instructions, and he followed my instructions. So he comes and he says, so then it makes sense. But in the case of changing, that I come and I tell him, you know, buy me, buy me wheat, buy me chita. And instead he buys me barley. I'll throw the barley in his face. I'm going to tell you, I don't want to chill it. I want a, a hamim. Right, what's going on over here? Yeah? So if it's not, it's not, that there is Mishane. It's not the same thing. So Teida, what's the proof? He says, the Tzalamas, we learned in the Mishnah. Echad amadish nechasa veechad amadich et atzmo. En lo biksut ishto velo biksut banav. Right? Lo betseva shetzava lishman. Velo besandalim chadashim shelachal lishman. It says like this. Imagine a person comes and he's going to consecrate his properties to a Kalosh Baruch Hu. Or he's going to evaluate himself and he gives that to a Kalosh Baruch Hu. He cannot take nothing of his wife's clothing. So the value already went down, you know, three quarters, right? Or in the suit of his children. Yeah, he doesn't have his wife's clothing, right? And he cannot take the clothing of his children, right? Not only that, right? Because he cannot consecrate those things. Not only that, the Gizbar also cannot take, not in the Tseva, that they actually came and they actually uh, uh, painted, right? For the wife's clothing and all those things. And not in the Sanalim Chadashim Shilachal Nishman, or not in new shoes or things like that that you bought for them as well. Okay? So he comes and he says, so it comes out, right, that in all these cases, okay, it comes out that in all these cases, okay, you cannot take these things. Now the Gemara says, am I? But why? Why is it like this? So, why don't we also say the same thing? Who's the one that's saying that, and who's telling the one that's painting that he's doing it for the wolf, for the wife, right, and for the children? Because we are going to say, he's doing the shlichut. And therefore, he's like the hand of the woman. So, he's doing the same thing. And therefore, even though the mocher, the seller, does not know that he went and he sent him, that he's buying it for someone else, right? It's still going to come, right? And it's going to help, right, for the mishaleach, right? But not if he's mishane. Meaning, if he's mishane, it's something completely different. If he changes, Something goes different, but if he's doing the exact same thing, there's no problem. So Amar Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Abba says, no, it's not true. He says, no, it's a different reason. So you know what the reason is? When you come and you're going to consecrate clothing, you already know that you're consecrating the clothing without your wife's clothing or without your children's clothing. And therefore it's done from the beginning. So it's nothing to do with the change or the mocher or the tzaba. Nothing to do with it. When you come and you do this, that is the condition. That's what's actually going on. Okay, so Matki Fla Rabbi Zera Rabbi Zera comes and he asks the following question: He says, when a person comes and does he actually think that he's going to consecrate his tefillin, right? So it's obviously it's it's mistaber that a person that's going to come and be with the Magdish is tefillah, right, from new clothing, right, which is going to be for his wife and children. Utsnan we say, Magdish nechasam alinu tefillin, right? We're even going to actually evaluate the tefillin. So imagine you come and you say, I'm going to give all my properties to the Beit Hamikdash. How much is the tefillin worth? And you have to give that as well. Now, obviously, there's much more, right? Uh, you know, a person's not thinking about a tefillin. So what's going on? So Amalei Abay Abay says, yes, that toshel adam al tefillin, right? The person does think about his tefillin when he's consecrating all his properties. 
the one that's making Madish, he thinks this, I'm doing a mitzvah. And therefore, right, is going to be also on the tefillin. But he doesn't want to come and do the wife and children, their clothing, because if not, there's going to be an animosity in front of him. Imagine right now you come and you say, ah, I'm sorry, right, your clothing, I went and I I, I gave it to the Beit HaMikdash. Imagine, uh, imagine where you're going to sleep in the night. Yeah? So if you're going to start sleeping in the toilet, or I don't know where exactly, you understand? In the garage, so that, so you're not going to do it. You're not going to have that on the dot. And therefore, obviously, that wasn't what we're talking about in such a case. Okay? comes and he asks the question, one second. We're talking about now the chiyuv of arachim. Now, by both of them, we're talking about the entire concept of the erif. So therefore, it has nothing to do, for sure it's not talui, right, because we learned chayve arachim, we take it as a mashkon in order to pay the tashlum. So we will come and take it as a mashkon, right, as a collateral to make sure that he pays up. Right, right, now, one, one second. When he came and he did this nede, right? You need this erif. Does he want that they should take it away from him as a mashkon? Obviously not, right? Because if he didn't have the money to pay, he didn't want that they're going to take it against his will until he's going to pay up something, right? So he comes and he says, so therefore, if we're talking about now begadim, right? That a person is going to come and he's going to start coloring, right? So if it is shayach to him, so therefore, one second, they could actually come and take it as a as a collateral. So says the Gemara, no, it's not true. Ela mar biaba, kol hamagdish nechasav nasa kemishi kna lahem kesut ishtu banam meikara. We're going to make it judged ki ilu he already was makne from the beginning, the begadim chadashim to his wife and children, and therefore when he's already buying it, it already belongs to them. So therefore, we cannot say now that it belongs to him. So if it does not belong to him. Right? Obviously, even if he is going to be Magdish Nechasav, it doesn't matter because he cannot collect it. He cannot do anything with it. It doesn't belong to him. Okay? So says the Gemara, if this right now is what we're talking about, right? He comes and he says, right, like this. He says, Tan Rabbanam, we learned in a Braita. Sadeh If you're going to purchase a field in the name of your friend, we're not going to come and force you to sell it. But if he went and he said, Right, that he's buying it al minat in order on condition to sell it. Right, so then we are going to come and do it, which means something incredible. You're purchasing it kiilu for your friend. Do we not force you to come and sell it to your friend? Because kiilu, this is what you're coming to do it. So and now, if he tells him it's his own condition, we do force him to sell it because you said I'm buying the field on condition I'm giving it to my friend. So okay, so you sell it to him. Now yes, he he, you're you're gonna you could force him to sell it to the friend. So says the Gemara. Come on, what are we talking about exactly? Amar Rav Sheshat says Rav Sheshat. This is what it means to say. Alokeach sadeh mechaverov b'shem reshkaluta. If you're going to purchase a field for your friend in the name of reshkaluta, which means right, you're you're buying it for the reshkaluta, right? That's what you're doing it, okay? And that's what they wrote on the star. En kofinoto, right? The reshkaluta linko. We're not going to come and force him to come and to and to sell it, okay? Meaning we're not going to force him to come and make a shtar mechida between him and the lokeach amiti, right? The real, the real guy, okay? The real owners of the thing, okay? That means the lokeach does not have shum reaya on the balut because at the end of the day it's written for the resh kaluta. And therefore the lokeach, right? Um, he wants that the resh kaluta should now write a shtar, right? Where it's written that the resh kaluta sold it, right? To the lokeach, right? But he says the resh kaluta is not obligated to do so. However, though, Vimamar, but if he comes and he says the lokeach to the mocher, right, that it's going to be on minat, on condition, then we do force him to do it. Because again, everything has to do with, do we, it was it done on condition or was it not done on condition? If it was bought on condition to do such a thing, so if we force them to come and to fulfill the condition. But if it wasn't, then not. So it says the Gimana, Amar Mor, HaLokeach Sadeh B'Shem Reshkaluta in Kofino to Reshkaluta Linkor, right, Miklav, so it's actually much more that the lokeach actually purchases a field and not the reshkaluta. So why don't we say that that's a machloket then? Who was the one that told the balachitin that he's buying chitin for the balabait? Meaning according to their shita, a person cannot buy something for his friend 
unless the mocher knows that he's buying it for him. Meaning when you come and you're buying something, you have to let the person know, I'm buying it for A. Okay? Meaning I'm buying it for Mr. A. I'm buying it for somebody else. So in our, in our topic then, when the, the seller is thinking that he's selling it to the Rishkaluta, and that's what's written in the, in the Shtar Mechira. So now how all of a sudden now is he going to come and he's saying that he, that he, he has to say that he's actually a shaliach. So says the Gemara in Mishunhat, it was this case, it's not a question. He comes and he says the Lokeach was modia to the Bala Sadeh, right? And also to the Dea Mechira, Shehu Lemaase Konet HaSadeh Latzmo. That means he's actually telling them, I'm buying it for myself. I'm not buying it for the Rishkaluta. So it comes out that the Mocher does know that he's buying it, that he's the one buying it. It's not going to Rishkaluta. It's actually going to him. So for since it's actually going to him and he knows that, meaning the seller knows that, so it's a completely different talacha over here. So says the Gemara, okay, so it's the Seifa then. The Seifa says, al minat. Meaning if you sold it al minat, this is what he's going to do, so then kofinoto, we are going to force him, right, to do it. Kofinoto reshkaluta linkor. Why? The reshkaluta could say, lo yakraichu be'ena velezilute daichu be'ena. Right? I don't want your kavod, right? And I don't want your zilzul. Which means, this t'nai that you guys are doing, is not going to be mechayevoti. Right? Which means, I don't want this. Like, what are you trying to do exactly? Right? That kilu, you're putting it on the Shema Reshkaluta. Right? You're, you're, you're kilu using the Reshkaluta's name. And what are you trying to do? So, I don't want that. So, the Reshkaluta could come and say, I don't want this thing. What are you doing? And I'm going to rather Rabbi come and he says, you're right. This is what he means to say. Halokeach Sadeh B'Shem Chavero, which is a Reshkaluta. But at the end, he bought it for himself. So en kofin et hamocher limpor, right? We don't obligate the seller to come and sell it. Zim nachrite for another time, right? To write another star. Im amal lo beri vitodom al menat kofin. Which means it is: you come to me, you buy something. I come and I write you a document. Five minutes later, you come and you tell me, yeah, yeah, but I need a document now for me, not for the shkaluta. I come and tell you goodbye. Why? I'm not obligated to write you another document. I sold it once. You made the whole you know, like a trick or whatever it is, that you told me Reshkaluta, I wrote down Reshkaluta, five minutes later you come to me and you're telling me not for yourself. I'm not, it's your problem, not mine. You go get a document between the Reshkaluta and yourself, you meddle in your own business, but you cannot force me to, I mean, if you tell me I'm not, on condition, it's something different. Right, then yes, then they obligate you to actually come, and then obviously we're going to continue with this tomorrow, Bezat Hashem.